we're standing in the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum next to the display of Mr. Lincoln and Senator Stephen Douglas holding the fifth of their seven debates in 1858. Senator Douglas, Democrat, was probably the leading senator in the United States Congress. Abraham Lincoln, the new Republican, was more or less a nobody. But he challenged Douglas, and he nearly won. Lincoln launched his campaign with a famous speech, which we know today as the House Divided speech. He said that a house divided against itself cannot stand, meaning the United States with some states allowing slavery and some states having forbidden it already could not remain that way divided. No one had put it that clearly in biblical terms or constitutional terms before. Douglas was incensed because Douglas's position was that people in each state ought to be allowed to decide on their own. They talked about this for seven face-to-face -face debates, each one lasting about three hours long. They took turns going first 60 minutes, then a 90-minute reply by the other one, then a 30-minute finale by the first man. Who won the debates, people ask? Well, it was a tie, at least if you base it on the crowd's response. Lincoln won two of them, it seems. Douglas won two of them, it seems. The other three were a draw, more or less. But in the voting, ah, the public didn't vote for senators. This was a big deal in Illinois because the public didn't vote for senators. The public voted for their own state legislature, and then the majority party in the new state legislature would pick the person they wanted to go to Washington as the senator from Illinois, one of two. It took turns every two, four years. Well, Lincoln's party, the new Republican Party, won a majority of the votes statewide for the state legislature. But because of the old redistricting, the newly elected legislature was more heavily Democratic and those people voted in Douglas to return to Washington by a vote of 54 to 46. It's not easy to read all of this today. They had to repeat themselves a fair bit in each of seven cities all over the state. You can read it today, but imagine going and listening to it, the thrill of the crowd, two, five, 10, 15,000 people showing up in these cities to listen to them live. Hot weather, cool weather, windy weather, dusty weather. This was drama, and it was covered in newspapers all across the eastern United States for the first time. The Senate campaign between Lincoln and Douglas was the first US Senate campaign covered in out-of-state newspapers. The issue was critical. We have different issues today. Let's go over to the library now and talk about what resulted from these spoken words. Now we're across the street in the presidential library to discuss what happened to all those words that Lincoln and Douglas spoke. Lincoln turned them into a book for his 1860 presidential campaign. Here is the book. Political Debates of Lincoln and Douglas in the Campaign of 1858. This was a big seller in the year 1860, kind of a surprise. There were 17 different printings of it, we think. Columbus, Ohio, New York, Boston, Chicago, Detroit, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh. People wanted to read this. There were people who were voting first, though. Here's a little ticket if you went to vote after you'd heard the debates. A Republican would choose this ticket, vote for the other people running for Republican offices in one county in Illinois. Democrats used this ticket in one of the other counties, both state level and local politicians. You can read all these words again today in some modern editions. A couple of good scholars, Harold Holzer 
with an unexpurgated version. Alan Gelzo with a version that interprets a lot of what was actually happening. You can read 320 pages in volume three of the Lincoln collected works as published by the Lincoln Association in 1953. People were reading it in the newspapers, though, at the time, all over the country. And that's why it lived. That's why it was so important. So today we ask, were there words in 1858 important enough that we remember them now? Well, yes, because the idea of candidates facing off together in live debates got revived around the time of the 100th anniversary of the Lincoln-Douglas debates. It's not just a curiosity that slavery was the issue then and something else today, whether it's abortion, gun rights, gay marriage, you name it. The Constitution is unclear about some of these things, and that's why candidates debate. We learn from Lincoln and Douglas. We learn from the candidates today who are inspired by that model. Maybe the model's different now, but the importance to our political life is the same. Thank you.